All right, hi, welcome back to Ken's Kitchen. It's a nice Sunday here in the Mid-South. Today we're gonna to prepare another classic for you. This is gonna be meatloaf, mashed potatoes, gravy, and corn. Today we're gonna to start with our meatloaf. I sauteed some peppers, garlic, onions, and a touch of shallot into just two tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna take that and put that into the ground beef over here. This is how we're gonna season it, okay? Here. I have two eggs here. Whenever you put eggs in there as a binder for any type of meat, you must whisk them. Whisk them. No salt, no none. Just whisk your eggs nice and light. Nice and light. Give it a good whisk. We're going to pour that over on top. Just like that. Okay, here. Next thing we're going to add. We got some breadcrumbs. I like the Italian style breadcrumbs. That's going to help bind your meatloaf, okay? I'm gonna just saute that in there just a little bit. I'm gonna say that's about a half a cup. Next thing I'm gonna add, I'm divulging my secrets. We have some beefy onion soup mix, okay? This is gonna give it a lot of flavor. You don't have to add salt or anything. I'm only gonna put a half a packet because I don't want it too, too salty. So let's go with just a little bit, maybe just a half a packet. I'm gonna say that's a quarter of a packet which is more than enough for what we want to do, a quarter of a packet. Next thing we're going to add, Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to add three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce to my meatloaf. That's about three. Okay. Next thing we're going to add, another one of my secrets that I think that you might like. You want to have a savory meatloaf? I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. That's right, barbecue sauce. Three cups of it, three tablespoons, I'm sorry. Just ever so lightly, just three tablespoons. Okay, one, two, and I will say that's three. All righty, the next thing we're gonna add is the sauteed peppers and onions. So we're gonna bring it over. We're gonna bring the sauteed pepper and onions over to our meatloaf. Nice little, nice little towel to set our hot pan on. I'm gonna pick this up. And we're gonna bring this to the meatloaf and we're gonna add it very slowly. Remember, this is kind of warm and you do got to toss that meatloaf. So just add that in there, saute it very lightly, my onions and peppers. And I think that's the way to go with this. Maybe you got just about all that goodness out of there. Let's see. And also I had a little dried parsley in there as well with it. I think it gives it a nice pungent flavor. Okay, now I did saute this. Now before I mix it, I did let it cool because you don't want to salt, you don't want to mix up hot vegetables, obviously. So we're gonna have to do this. There's only one way to do this. You gotta get your hands in there, make sure they're clean, no dirt in your nails and all that. So let's proceed with mixing it from the bottom to the top. This is about two pounds of of 90 10 ground beef okay two pounds i'm going to mix it all up incorporate it it's just one of the dishes you just can't put your hands in ain't no getting around it okay incorporate it thoroughly nice and easy all right we just incorporate it meet it i'm going to do this for about about a, two minutes until i feel every you can feel everything is well incorporated in seasoning all right, there's one more ingredient I want to add to this that I didn't, and it's going to be some, I was going to add some black pepper, but I think it's seasoned enough. We don't need the black pepper. I was going to put some in there, but I don't think we need it. Okay, let's give that a toss. Give that little rascal a toss. Give it a toss. And because this is 80-20 ground beef, we'll get some fat. I don't think there's no, no need to, to uh, grease the uh, meatloaf pan. I don't think you have to. You're going to get some, but not a lot. And so you can see it's binding and coming together. It's going to be one big nice loaf. Nice and easy, see? It's not hard. It's going to have a nice flavor. Okay, I feel that everything's incorporated. This is very nice. We're going to just simply take this meatloaf and put it in the pan. There it is. We're going to have a nice meatloaf. We're going to shape it with our hands. Pat it down so it can cook. Nice and easy. 
All right, that looks like a meatloaf to me, and that's gonna cook. You don't wanna stuff it, but you do wanna get it in there nice and easy. All righty. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna rinse, get my hands a quick rinse here. All righty, wipe them off on the towel. A few peppers here on the side, we'll just throw that in there too. All right, my oven's that preheated it. Okay, we have our meatloaf that we mixed up. We're simply gonna pop this in the oven at 350 for about an hour, or an hour and a half. And with that, we're gonna have some sauteed corn and peppers, and we're gonna have mashed potatoes. All right, here we are. We're gonna finish up the rest of the meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and corn. What we're gonna do is make some garlic mashed potatoes. I've got a little olive oil in a skillet. If you don't have a skillet like this, you can use some tin foil as well. We're just gonna throw that in there. We're gonna stick it in the oven at 375 and become tender. Our meatloaf is almost done. We cook it to a turn of temperature of 165, 170. Then we're gonna let it rest, then it's gonna continue cooking. All right, here we're gonna do our we're gonna do our corn. We're gonna take our corn and we're gonna add some things to it though two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil just to get it going to a nice hot pan, not a cold pan. We're gonna add two tablespoons of butter. One, two, we're gonna turn the fire down, we don't have to sizzle or cook too fast. We got that nice and low. To that, we're gonna add these bell peppers that we chopped up and diced earlier. Just add that in there nice and, nice and easy, nothing hard about it. We're also gonna add those onions and the shallots. We're gonna let that go, and we're gonna cook that for about five minutes to translucent. Get going to stir, let that go a little bit, okay? Cook that, cook that for about two minutes. This is a nice hot skillet. We just wanna saute it, nice and easy. Let that go. Okay, that's doing just fine. That's that we want, that's goodness right there in the pan, so don't worry about that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add, we're gonna let that go for about a minute. We're gonna do this, we're doing this live. We're gonna go with a little garlic here. A little chopped garlic. Just ease it in there, lower the fire. We don't want to burn the garlic. No one likes burning garlic. We're gonna go with that nice and smooth. We're gonna saute that a little bit. And we're gonna cheat on this dish a little bit because I like to make meals as quick, efficient that you can make when you come home from work. No one wants to spend hours cooking anything, but they want a good meal. So the prep time on this is about 20 minutes max. We've got some whole kernel corn, which, are, which I've drained. It's a canned corn, you know, it's gonna come out good. We're just gonna toss that in there too, and let that fry up with the butter and olive oil. All right, that's fine, but I'm using two cans because I wanna eat some corn tonight. I'm gonna throw that in there as well. We drain, we drain the water off of it. All right, to this, we're gonna add little seasoning to this okay I've got some parsley dried parsley I'm gonna add to it just enough to sprinkle on there mm-hmm mm-hmm and then I got my own seasoning blend which consists of garlic powder onion powder paprika black pepper and a little Mrs. Dash seasoning I'm just gonna sprinkle put a sprinkle I would say it'd be about a tablespoon okay Stir. Yeah, a little quick stir. You do nothing to this, just let it cook. Get the fire up a little bit, just let that cook. And to this, it's good the way it is. We're gonna let it cook a little more. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add just, just a little bit of a little bit of chicken stock to this. Just a touch. We got a little sodium free chicken stock. I'm gonna say about not even a quarter of a cup, just a little bit. So we can cook down, let that get moist. Now we're gonna put the cargo on this and leave this alone for about 15 minutes. Right here, I have some new potatoes, red potatoes, that I cook with the skin on, which I've had boiling for about 20, 25 minutes. See, they're nice and tender. That's done. What we're gonna do to that, we're gonna drain the water off, and I'm gonna add the garlic when it comes out of the oven, mash the garlic up, and we're gonna make a gravy. And that'll be the end of the dish. We'll show you the finished product. All right, we're back. We're back. 
Here's that meatloaf that we cooked. We have an internal temperature of 165, 170. We're gonna let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before we touch it. Here's our garlic that we roasted in the oven that's gonna go on our potatoes. Our new potatoes, I drain the water, but here's the secret to really getting it good. As you drain the water, put it back on there and look at all that moisture coming out. That's why your potatoes don't come out thick and creamy. There's water in there that's coming out of there. Set it on there about, about a minute or two and look at all that water come out after we thought we had drained it. Okay, we're done with that. We're gonna cut that off. We're gonna simply add these roasted potatoes. We got these roasted garlic, brother. We're just gonna drop that in there. Roasted garlic, that's all it is for garlic potatoes. We're gonna take this over here. We're gonna add, uh, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of butter to it. We have our corn and we're gonna make a sherry gravy with this with some portobello mushrooms for our meatloaf. So about five minutes, come see me, we'll plate the dish and let me know what you think about it. All right, our dish is almost completed. We're gonna make a simple gravy and I'm gonna cheat on it. The purest, we can go with the flour, stir it and saute it, but I wanna make these dishes quick and efficient when you could come at home from a day's work and do it like it's nothing. We have some portobello mushrooms here, okay? I'm, I took some of the drippings out of the meatloaf and threw it in the pan. I got it heated, not hot, but just enough. You know, mushrooms take a minute to cook. So we're just gonna add maybe a half of things of baby portobello mushrooms. It's not hard, not hard at all. That's, I think that's more than enough, just a half a pack, that's good. So you're gonna let that cook and render down a little bit, okay? Let that render down, you know, mushrooms take a minute to cook. And to that, we're just gonna let it sit. And what I wanna do as it's cooking, as it heats up and, and start cooking, we're gonna add some sherry, some sherry, any kind of sherry, expensive and expensive, just some good sherry. We're gonna add about, about three tablespoons of sherry Maybe a quarter of a cup, of, maybe a quarter cup of sherry. Then we're gonna have a quarter cup of grease stock and we're gonna cheat on it. We're gonna add something that I'm normally against. We're gonna use just some brown gravy mix to make a quick gravy because we wanna eat, because we worked all day and we might be tired. And that will complete our dish. So right now we let the mushrooms do its job. And with this, if you hear it sizzling, it's doing a fine job. Get our beloved little spoon, just moving around so it don't stick. That's all we want. Let it do its job. I got, I got it on a medium temperature, I would say. Let that go a little bit, no problems. All right, we're gonna take our sherry here. All right, to that hot pan, just what I say, just a little bit. You guys really want to see the sizzling? I'm gonna say it's a quarter of a cup, quarter of a cup of sherry. We still got that on hot, let it do its job. Okay, smell it, it's got a nice, nice fragrance to it. It goes well with the mushrooms. And we got little, little other drippings from the meatloaf in there as well. So that's going to lend, lend it to favor. We got a medium high heat. Remember when you cook with alcohol, once you boil, the alcohol content is out. So if you got kids, you don't have to worry about it. We're just looking for the flavor out of it. That's all. Okay. Let that baby do its thing. About a minute. And to that, we're going to add. See, we got a nice sear on that baby. Now it's going good. Let that cook for about two or three minutes. But for demonstration purposes, we're gonna add our beef broth to it, okay? And that's about three quarters of a cup. And we're gonna just let it do its thing. That's about it. Just let it go. Do its thing. And to that, we're gonna cheat a little bit. We could do it with the flour and make it from scratch. I have no problem with that, but I know you guys are in a hurry, so you're gonna want some flavorful, quick, and good. We're just gonna add some brown gravy mix to that. That's all. Just a little bit. We're gonna add this little package. We got it on medium-high heat. You want to sprinkle that across there? Mm-hmm. All right. Then we're gonna get the stir. We're gonna get that stir. Remember, just keep it going. Keep it going good. Let it stir, let it render down. It's gonna thicken up. We're gonna cover it for about five or 10 minutes and our dish will be completed. And then we'll show you the finished product and plate it for you.